This video includes a very, very simplified definition and use of big O, just to give a sense of some of the patterns that we're going to see with big O. So big O in general talks about how much time or space a function needs. We're going to be talking about time to start off with. And we can think about the function here, 5, that takes in no inputs, as requiring constant time. So it de doesn't depend upon the input that's passed into 5, namely because 5 doesn't take any input. So you can see on the right, when the function 5 is called, it returns the value 5, and no other recursive calls are made, or no other function calls are made. So the runtime does not depend upon the magnitude of input. That's the key pattern I want you to observe in constant time functions. A linear time function is one where it does depend upon the magnitude of the input. So here I have the fact function, which we wrote before, and you can see the trace of the fact function on the right. So the magnitude of the argument to fact, here 6, determines the number of function calls that get made. So O of n is where the runtime is proportional to the magnitude of the input. And again, this is just to get you familiar with some of the classes of problems that we're seeing with big O. We can also see ones that are logarithmic time, log base 2 of n. I have the function have count here. We'll be talking more about that in later lectures. But what it does is it divides the argument or the magnitude of the input by 2 each time. So it's always cutting its input in half. So you, if you look at the trace on the right, we start off at 32, then 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So instead of having 32 recursive calls, each time I cut it in half. And we're going to refer to this as logarithmic time. And the magnitude of the input is cut in half with each recall, recursive call. We're not talking here about why cutting the magnitude in half each time produces this log base 2 of n runtime. We're going to talk about that later. The last one is exponential. It takes in the value n and returns the Fibonacci number at that index. Here you make two slightly smaller recursive calls each time. Factorial made one slightly smaller recursive call each time. This one makes two slightly smaller recursive calls each time. So each time it's going to branch out. Here, here's a call with fib of 2. Fib of 2 calls fib of 1, which returns 1. It also calls fib of 0, which returns 0. And eventually fib of 2 returns 1. Similarly, when we call fib of 3, fib of 3 calls fib of 2. And there's the whole set of recursive calls that are generated by fib of 2. Fib of 3 also calls fib of 1. Both of those return 1's and we get 2 in the end. But here I have a branching factor where I actually have 2 to the n calls if n is the input to fib. Just in general with big O, we care about the asymptotic order of the work of that's getting done. So in general we're going to ignore constant factors and we're going to ignore all but the biggest term. So in this second one, we have both 2n squared and 5n. We're going to ignore the smaller term because n squared is always going to be larger than n. And we're also going to ignore this 2 in front, and we just call this big O of n squared. So we just care about the biggest terms, and we're going to ignore coefficients. So in this last case, look at this and try and guess what we're going to get here. This one's going to be O of n to the third because we're going to use the largest term and we're going to ignore the constant coefficients.